What up, what up, world? I know it's been a while, but welcome back to Hosted by Decent with me, your host, Decent. And my guest at this time has spent a large majority of his career behind the scenes, putting together the major deals, situations of that matter. But now he's upgrading. He's becoming the label head now. So that means if he can't get you in court, he'll hold you over a balcony to make sure that he gets everything from you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for James McMillan. Woo! <laughs> James, how you doing, brother? I'm blessed, man. Good to see you, decent. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Now, this is one of the more interesting interviews that I'm having because normally I'm dealing with people who are in front of the camera, you okay. know, the artists and the stars. But this one kind of struck me, and this is something that I feel like I need to bring to Hosted by Decent because I'm infatuated with the behind-the-scenes aspect of the music industry. I've been in the music industry for pretty much all of my life. Okay. And... I know we've been conditioned to always look at what's in front of the camera, what's being presented, but right. we never get to see how things get put together. So thank you for stopping by and you know giving us your journey and the behind the scenes look at how everything runs in the industry. And speaking of behind the scenes, why don't you give us a little bit of who you are as a person, man, you know, businessman, all that stuff, black man, you know, man in general, if you subscribe to that. I absolutely subscribe to that. All so right. I'm a black man from Cleveland, Ohio. Right, right. Uh, born and raised. So I went to law school, flunked out, and had to sit out for two years. Now, I flunked out in large part because I was really immature. Um, uh, but th that actually made me a lot sharper mm -hmm. because during that two-year time period that I was out, I became hyper-focused on what I really wanted to do. First of all, I, I, I went through a lull where I felt like I was um, a failure in life because I'd never failed at anything. Right. And, you know, to be kicked out of law school, um, you know, with my peers um, and see my, my peers matriculate was really, like, you know, I think it was a pivotal moment for me. It, uh, it helped me um, gain perspective. And, that, and I, I, I channeled that perspective to really find what I really wanted to do. So... At the time, I knew I always loved music, and I, I think I loved it more than the average person. Mm -hmm. I'm out of you know a crazy CD collection, and I worked at a record store, and I used that to, that 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 uh, experience to channel um, what what I really wanted to do, and that was twofold: one, to be, become a lawyer, and and two, I had this dream of you know being impactful in music. I didn't know how or what I was going to do because I wasn't really familiar with you know, label executives and what they do mm -hmm. at the time. Um, but, you know, so I just focused on becoming, getting back into law school. And once I got back into law school, I focused on becoming a, gr a great lawyer. And I got caught up in that for a while. And then the opportunity presented, presented itself for me to work at a, 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 a entertainment firm, a law firm in New York City. So I did that for a while for uh, Reggie Ose and, and Ed Woods. And, um, and working for those guys, I learned that they just, you know, at the time that I started working for them, they represented some any and everybody in, in hip hop. And they were like the first like black firm to do, you know, fo to totally focus on hip hop music. Awesome. So that we, you know, we represented DMX, we represented uh, Shine, or those Matt Middleton represented both of them, but he was in the office with us too. I'm pretty Cup. sure you guys were extremely busy around that time. Oh, too, yeah, most definitely. Because if you're representing DMX and Shine, I would imagine. Yeah, it was it was issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we, we but, dealt with a lot, man. It was a lot. You know, you got, you got you know, brothers c coming from all kinds of different backgrounds, but then they're being culturally celebrated right. for their art at a time, at a pivotal time in the industry when... You know, it, it was like highly commercialized, so they were making millions and millions of dollars, and it was you know it was different from some of their their peers in in the past, the people that had come before them. All right. Let's talk more about the artists. You know, not necessarily the artists that you represented, but the artists as you know entity. Now, mm -hmm. I feel like we're in a place with hip hop, and I also say this a lot where. If you're rapping, you also need a job. <laughs> and I say that because, you know, hip hop being, you know, the powerhouse that it is now, right. it opened the door for many ventures and many different opportunities. So now right. you have artists who are podcast hosts or right. personalities and, you know, on TV or they're doing these other things that are just as, if not even more lucrative than making music itself. Do you feel like in order for an artist to sustain longevity, not just when it comes to relatively but monetarily that they need to do other things and be multifaceted? Some artists just need to focus on the music because they're so, you know, they're, you know, they're so dynamic as musicians that, you know, trying to become, you know, an all, a brand ambassador as well as, you know, building a whole nother venture can be distracting to, to, to their art. Mm -hmm. And so they pro probably should just focus on the art. 
Why, whereas, you know, you've got, you know, your, your people that are not atypical, like um, uh, Puff Daddy or uh, Jay-Z, who, you know, use their musical platform to propel them to, you know, higher success in other areas. You know, you have a lot of people who want to take on multiple roles in, I want to say, a, a behind-the-scenes capacity where they're mm -hmm. a lawyer, they're, you know, their manager, yeah. their you know, their producer, their you know, all these titles just for the mere sake of being able to, you know, get all of the money that comes with right. each of those titles. Why do you feel like you know so many of these people exist in the entertainment industry, more specifically in hip hop? Because you don't see it all too much with other genres and music. I feel like hip hop is kind of the one where people tend to like pick at the bones of an you know up and coming artist trying to be mother, father, sister, brother, so... Uh, I disagree with that. Really? Yeah, 100%. Because oh, I think... It, first I think, disagreement on the show. Yeah, when you look at other cultures and you read some of the case studies that happen in, in other areas of, of, of entertainment, mm -hmm. it's the same, it's a similar story that happens in other areas as well. Mm -hmm. You've got people that are, you know, your Taylor Swifts go through it, just like your Britney Spears, they go through the same yeah, kind I'm of stuff. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's more... Prevalent, you think? Yeah, prevalent. And I say that because... Off the rip, just as a culture, sure. hip hop is just being picked at by any and everybody. So it isn't beyond so many different people to look at a young black male or a young black woman and go, you know what? They have talent. You know, I see something in them. Let me get as much out of them as they possibly can. That's like a product of or byproduct of of, of hip hop being like the number one genre. Exactly. I don't know if it's if it's specific to, you know, our culture. But I think that it's, it's, it's prevalent in our culture because, you know, there's a lot of money floating around in our culture. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit more about your label, um, Art of War, that okay. you just came up with and is doing phenomenal things. Like, Thank you, brother. So early, yeah. you know, with the YBN Collective Court, they having this critically acclaimed body of work yeah. in one of my favorite projects. He's a fantastic that artist. That this year. Amazingly smart young man yeah. that we're looking forward to, you know, creating history with. Just him and his whole entire team, you mm -hmm. guys have been making all of the right moves and the right steps just Thank for Thank you, man. I, I want to shout out my team. You got Ace and Byron and Guns and those guys. They, they really helped. Keyword team. Yeah, team. <laughs> and James Prince and uh, his team. And, and we, we've come together to really, you know, put our muscle behind these guys and, 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 and put our thoughts and experience behind these guys to help them shape up to where they are currently. So, all that war, the conception behind that when was when was the moment for you when you went you know what we're doing this before art at war i started a company with machine gun kelly called est 19xx how did that whole scenario play out because mgk rabbit fan base and it seems like that's another artist that seems to have a team that's working behind yeah, well, we built a team i mean we built a team around it i took the team that came to me and kind of you know really instilled my know-how and experience behind those guys to to train them and teach them how to become um, a force within the industry. Now, we're gonna play a game. Now, okay. the name of this game is called Triple Threat. Now, right. since you fastened yourself as a lawyer, mm -hmm. a manager, mm -hmm. and now head of a label, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you three scenarios. Okay. And for each scenario, what do you do as a manager, a lawyer, and the head of a label. Scenario number one. Yep. Your client has a show. They're supposed to go on at 9 p.m. sharp. Mm -hmm. They had a studio session that ran over and now they're stuck in traffic. It's already 8.50 p.m. Mm -hmm. What do you do as a manager, a lawyer, and the head of a label? So as a manager, I'm going to find, I'm going to try to find a way for them, for the uh, uh, promoter or the club venue to extend the time for my artists to get to the show. Okay. And I'm gonna also try to find a way to keep the crowd engaged uh, before my artist gets there so they don't start to you know, get too rowdy. As a lawyer, I'm going to um, look at the contract and I'm gonna call my office and I'm gonna ask whoever's there or I'm gonna pull it up on my phone wherever however I do it. I'm gonna look at the agreement and see exactly you know, at what point are we in breach, mm -hmm. right? Um, and at what point, if at all, they can withhold our back end. As a label exec, I'm going to 
contact the lawyer and the manager and make sure that they're doing the, the, the two things that I just talked about to make sure that they don't destroy the brand, the artist brand, the artist brand doesn't suffer. So we can go do another gig. Oh, he's good. I'm a beast, bro. <laughs> he's good. Okay, scenario two. Yeah. Your client has an interview with a controversial media personality. Not me, of course. Prior to the interview, you discussed that you can bring up certain topics. Right. This media personality not only brings up said topic, they're also extremely rude to your client. Mm. How do you handle it as a manager, mm. lawyer, and the head of a label? As a head of a label, I'm going to contact the executive. and uh, the, 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 uh, After the interview, I'm going to contact the people who set it up. Specifically, I'm gonna have a PR. I'm gonna have PR people and be like, "What the fuck, right?" Because I'm expecting them to kind of get ahead of that. But at the same time, I'm realistic. I know sometimes that you know personalities, media personalities, are going to freestyle and do what they want to do. Us <clears throat> never no. <laughs> With that said, you know if I have to, I'm going to contact the person myself and, and and explain to them, express to them why that interview may never see the light of day. One and two, why. Um, you know how disappointed I am in 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 the in the fact that they used my artist to try to build their own platform because right. it's a selfish move, yeah, you know, to some degree. As a lawyer, I'm going to try again, try to look at it to see um, did we sign the waiver, right? Do they have the right to even put that out? If they have, if we sign the waiver prior to walking in the room, then I'm going to try and figure out a way to get out of that waiver, right? Um, if we didn't sign a waiver, then I'm going to send them a cease and desist. As a manager. I'm going, to, I'm going to be on the ground dealing with the situation, and I'm going to try to do, do my best to keep my artist cool, right, and let him know that it's going to be handled by the lawyer and the label head, and we just need to get out of there. Because I've been in situations where, you know, depending on, you know, the artist, the artist may flip out, mm -hmm. you know, and it could be a real bad situation for the interviewer, and you don't want that to happen. Because, you know, a lot of times the media community is small and a lot of the media um, personalities know each other. And without context, if the media personality says, well, he came in and flipped out on me and, you know, uh, punched me in the face or something crazy, then it's just like, you know, you, the, the artist may suffer from it because the story will just be the artist came and flipped out without any kind of context as to how it came about. Then you go from label head, manager, lawyer to potentially getaway driver? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Once again, multifaceted. We don't want no smoke. All right. right. Your client calls you at 4 a.m. They sound hysterical. Mm -hmm. He tells you that they were just robbed by a stripper he met at a club and her friends. Mm -hmm. They took his money, his car, and his clothes. But he's more concerned about the photos and videos of them together that she plans on sending to the blogs and his new wife. What do you do as a manager, a lawyer, and the head of a label? From, as a manager... Mm -hmm and as a lawyer, and as a label head, my first question is, are you okay? Okay. Right? And I need to secure the situation. Mm -hmm. Where is security? Right? What's going on? Where are you currently at this exact moment? Right? Tell me where you are. We're, we're, we're sending in the troops. From a lawyer's perspective, um, if he's at King of Diamonds, you know, I'm, I'm coordinating with the police, right? Because you're talking about a robbery, mm -hmm. right? So, from a legal perspective, I'm coordinating with the police to determine who these women are. So I'm going. We're going. We're going to King of Diamonds. We're checking the footage. We're 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 going in to figure out. You know, to build a case, right? To figure out who these people are and to try and help my guy, who's now a victim, uh, determine what happened to him. From a manager's perspective, I'm trying to create, trying to get in front of the narrative, right? Because all you know, what it, from what you've just described, there is there's a there's some unknowns, right? There may be a video floating around that could come out and surprise and embarrass my guy and create a real family situation for him. So I need to get ahead of it and create a narrative that um, my guy can live with and is going to keep my guy, you know, pain, you know, going to, you know, basically show him as for being a victim. As a label head, I'm looking at it from a business perspective, but I'm also coming in using my contacts and using my 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 juice on the street to try and track those people down and get them, you know, get those tapes or whatever it is to disappear. More of the story, if you're a stripper out there playing to rob one of James clients, it ain't happening. <laughs> it's not going down like that. Not without a fight. So, if I see you outside of Starless, <laughs> you're trying to get the drop, just know that James on speed dial like, yo, Cinnamon, <laughs> she looking kind of shady right now. Keep it pushing, boo. Besides, black men don't cheat. <laughs>
<laughs> awesome, Absolutely. awesome, awesome, man. So now that you have this new venture, now that you have this, you know, added extra skin to, you know, everything that you've been doing thus far, mm -hmm. where do we go from here? Building a legacy, win, win, win. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about the bread. It's not about the money. It's about the win. Yeah. You know, everything else will come. You know, we, we there's Grammys in our future. There's trophies in our future. You know, we have a lot of things that we want to achieve, and we can do it. You know, by by channeling, you know, um, our our talent and, and 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 coaching and and managing them to greatness. And that's you know, I feel blessed to be in a position to be able to provide that kind of you know advice and and management experience to these guys. And um, and I feel blessed to be able to have great partners that I have. You know, like you know, um, James Prince. Um, Julie and Craig, uh, Julie Greenwald, Craig Coleman, um, in the past, John Janik as well, and not even in the past, Puff. Um, I've had some amazing mentors that have that have uh, come before me and have been gracious enough to share their experience. And it, it you know, it, it it would be it wouldn't be it, I wouldn't be doing my legacy justice if I didn't share that information with the people that came behind me in a meaningful way. So. You know, you ask where we're going, we're sharing these, these experiences and to the top. And we're going to take these young men to the top and young women to the top. Once again, you're curating this, you know, sort of old school mentality of, you know, making the artists feel like they're the artists and being able to handle everything and also learn and grow and foster their talent. And yeah. hopefully that'll start to be the trend throughout the course of the industry, because right now, more than ever, Artists are taking their destiny into their own hands. Yeah, and, for better, and for better or worse, <laughs> there needs to be some sort of system and balance to kind of help everything flesh it, be fleshed out so that way the culture can keep on moving. More people like you can open the doors for, you know, up-and-coming acts and people who want to get in entertainment and who also want to own labels as well. So thank you so much, James, for yeah, stopping said, by. Thank you for having me, brother. This was fun. All right. That's, you, man. All we do is have fun on this show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for James McMillan. Where can people find you at on social media? My Instagram is Jimmy Nichols. My, um, I've got in our website is artatwarent.com. And um, my law office is James E. McMillan, PC, uh, in New York City. I'm listed. I'm also online. For all you guys watching, hit them up. Make sure your money's in order, though, because <laughs> no pro bonos on the side of the fence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Hosted by Decent. Make sure you follow me on all social media at D-E-A-S-C-E-N-T. And surprise, we're a podcast now. The extended audio, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. Make sure you guys tune in for all new episodes. Subscribe to the Pop Dutch YouTube channel. Click the little bell to be notified of brand new content. And we will see you soon. Girl.